Hammer time. Hammer time. The flame is out for the Olympic Cauldron, but the flames are, are, are fast and furious at the box office. Or are they? Uh, we are stoking the passion flames, or trying to at least. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fifty Shades Freed. The trilogy comes to a climactic conclusion. Uh, let's get a look, and then I'll uh, share my thoughts. I've never seen you so fired up. Here we go. You do want to have kids someday, right? Someday, sure. You don't really sound sure. You know what I am sure about? Mm. That's great steak. Christian. Do you not want to have kids? Of course. One day, just not now. I'm not ready to share you with anyone. Yeah, it's bad. It's not a train wreck, though. This is shot in Vancouver, right? Yeah, you know what? If you're a Vancouver resident, you'll have a lot of fun spotting. You like how I go right to the hometown yeah. angle? The local areas and the environs uh, surrounding Vancouver. Uh, here's the fundamental problem for me. It goes back to the first movie. It was miscast from the get-go. I never bought the sexual chemistry between Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan, who respectively are strong actors. And Dornan, bless him, he's an Irishman. He cannot play an American to save his life. So he is so wooden and stilted in this movie. And you saw in that clip, she's asking him about kids. He's having steak dinner in their kitchen. The first movie had like pursuit and seduction and tension. Now they're just, it's like a domestic drama. It's so boring. It's like what real married life is like. Pretty much. With more sex. Wow. Um, okay, okay. Redeeming qualities of this movie, because this franchise is made under a billion dollars. Who will go to the theater and enjoy this? Fans of the first two movies and people that have read the book. Also, for the first time in the uh, movies, they actually went for comedy. And there's some well-earned laughs in this movie. So they kind of embrace the ridiculous of it all and just go for straight up campiness so that actually worked there's also the revenge plot thing it's like the screenwriters came up with all the sex scenes and then were like oh we need a story so then they stitched together the, narr the narrative so the uh, editing is very awkward it's full of the hackneyed dialogue um, and like at one point they're having sex in the kitchen and they're licking ice cream off each other and I'm just thinking what a mess who's gonna clean that up you know so I wasn't really buying any of it that doesn't do it for, for you no and at one point they're in this high speed yeah, in this part where they're in the chase they're there's this pursuit going on, and, and like when the shots of the cars are taking place, it's like they're careening around these corners, and it's all dramatic. And then it cuts to shots of her driving, and she's just like, do do do, I don't know, neighborhood drive. Uh, so yeah, it's um, it does have some redeeming qualities. By the end, I just I couldn't hate it anymore because I'm just like, it's actually so bad that I, it's kind of cathartic to just sort of embrace it because we've come this far. We might as well see how it pans out. Okay. Dare yeah. I ask, how many, how many hours for Fifty Shades Free? Some will swoon, but the rest of us will be uh, groaning and rolling our eyes. Two out of five. Oh, it got to. He's a little generous. <laughs> it's, it's cheesy. I it's, think you did like that ice cream scene yeah, after it's all, also maybe. Some huh? comedy, maybe. Yeah. This is my favorite movie review ever. All right. All right, we'll take a break. Uh,